Yeah, baby, yeah! Hey guys, how's it going, huh? Mr. Finn, finally here with you live, uncut and raw. Thank you for being with me tonight. Um, well, I don't know what time it is where you are uh, here in Brazil. I set the I set the live to go on at live or at nine, and this way, you know, kids are in bed, uh, classes are done. And I can be with you guys and to share a little bit. I wanted to come on live for a few reasons. Um, I've been meaning to do this for a long time. Uh, those of you guys who don't know me, uh, I'm an American, originally from Southern California, and I've been out here in Brazil for, it'll be 12 years this April. And I've shared these things in many videos, uh, kind of giving my credentials. And I've been teaching English since 2010. And it was in 2019, a banker from the bank out here, when he discovered that, I, uh, that I'm an American and that I teach English, he's the one that suggested that I go and start creating content on YouTube. And, you know, I liked the idea. I just didn't think I could do it. Uh, God, I got a pretty full schedule, a pretty busy guy. Then I thought to myself, you know, it's something that I do, right, every day. As an English teacher, I thought, you know what, let me give it a shot. I've always been interested in broadcasting, radio, uh, things like this. When I was a child, actually, I was a child actor. Uh, my students know this, but uh, yeah, when I, I grew up, like I said, in LA, Los Angeles area, and uh, growing up there, uh, my, my parents, my mother, she put me into acting. So I made some commercials. I, I don't know where they are, I've tried looking for them, but. Uh, I've always, I've always liked this. I've always been a, an outgoing, outspoken, energetic person. And I think because of that, it has, uh, has made me, you know, I think successful teacher. So, so I started this, right? I started teaching and then the guy at the bank told me to try to do YouTube. I was like, yeah, I should maybe try that. So that's when I created English Mr. Print. It was January, uh, 2019. I created both my YouTube and Instagram accounts, right? And that's when I started producing stuff. And I was horrible. I mean, I don't think I was necessarily horrible, my explanations and stuff, but my, um, I guess you could say my technical skills, my ability to, uh, I don't know, record, edit, uh, my production skills were not very good. But uh, I think I've gotten better. I mean, you guys will be the judge of that. And uh, so I started doing stuff, right? In the beginning, my goal was like two videos a week, I'm gonna do it. And that was like really impossible. <laughs> I had a little boy, right? He was born in 2016, so I had a little boy, and just really hard, right, with work and stuff. But I tried it. Um, you know, I have a daughter, right? I have two kids. And so it does make things challenging. And um, when I started getting the hang of, of uh, being more more active content creator, I, I, I was doing better. I was getting more excited to do this, but I didn't have, I didn't have the spot. I didn't have a way to do it. And probably, I think it was two or three weeks ago, I rented this house that I'm living in now. So now I have a house and uh, I have my own office and I kind of decorate it the way I like, right? I got my bookshelves here with my books and my flags and my bull head. I got from Portugal, um, and now I'm set up to finally go live. And this is something that I would like to do more often. Um, I would like you guys to tell me uh, if this is something that you would like to see, and what days of the week, you know, what you guys, you guys would like to see, and if this is a good time. Like I said, it's nine o'clock my time, and I'm, I'm, I decided this time based on the uh, the algorithm. Right on YouTube. YouTube tells me the best time for me to upload stuff or post stuff is about 9 a.m., 9, between 9 and 11 a.m. for me, and uh, 9 p.m., right? Uh, so anyways, that's that's why I chose 9 p.m. And also it's a little easier, I think, at this time. Kids are asleep, and there's not a lot of noise outside, which is a problem here. So, you know, that's it. I wanted to see, like, People coming on. I had one person on. They left. That's all right. Probably 
a little boring right now talking about a little bit of my life story. But yeah, that's it. So my idea for today was to kind of run a test. I wanted to see how well this works for me. I wanted to get the feel of it. I think the more I do, the better I'll get. And I wanted to make it a question and answer. If anybody had questions, right, you could just uh, leave a question in the comments box with a question here, right? Questions here. And I could talk to you guys. Um, I have some things I think I could talk about to help you guys as far as English and stuff. I have ideas that I think maybe you guys could find useful. I uh, My objective here is to make y'all better speakers. To make all of you who are subscribed to my channel, who like my content, to be the best communicators you guys can be in English, right? Uh, English being the global language of our time. And uh, so that's my goal. And so I had some ideas to, to do here. I would, like I said, I would like to do more lives like this, depending on my audience, depending on uh, stuff I got. But um, so that's my goal today. My goal is to kind of throw it out there, see if you guys have any questions you would like answered, anything about English, anything about American culture, anything about Brazilian culture that I find strange, um, anything about life, anything about me, anything about my family. I mean, pretty open, so I don't mind sharing. Uh, there might be a few things I might not answer, but uh, you guys, you guys, let me know. And it, until then, until then, I think I'll give like a kind of a little bit of a lesson, right? I figured that's what I do on my channel. That's what I do for my content. And I figured I'd do that. So what I had in mind today was I want, like I said before, help you guys be the best communicators that you can be. I want you guys to sound as natural as possible. So today I was putting together a list um, of short forms of words that are used. You can call them collocations. You can kind of call them contractions in a way, but they're not your typical contraction, right? I think most people who watch my content know that um, that these contractions are, you know, pronouns, pronouns and uh, verbs put together. And then this will create these words. You put these two words together and you have your contractions. But there are far more contractions than people realize. And you probably see them all the time. So this is the idea I had as far as, uh, I think my first live, the first, the first live I wanted to give, I wanted to do something that I think nearly everybody could find useful, right? And let's get, us, let's get started with that, right? Let me share my screen. Let me share a file that I put together here. And I want to see if you guys can recognize this stuff. Okay. Find it here. Where's the file? Files. Short form. Found it. All right. So. Huh. It says it can't share the file. Wait, that's something. The browser's having a hard time sharing the file. Well, that's not good. I spent a lot of time this afternoon sharing this file. Let's see if I try it again. It's a normal document. If not, then I'll put it in the chat. It'll we'll be really big for the chat. Short forms. No. All right, let me share my screen. If I share my screen, that might be better. Might work that way. Share my screen. Share screen. Two monitors. Share screen. There we go. Here we go. Found it. Got it. All right. So if you guys can see this here. You guys see this? 
this is the contraction that I've put together that a lot of people probably know, but they don't know that they know. Okay? Yeah, these, these here, these questions here. So, do any of these, are any of these familiar to you? I think some of the most familiar ones would be like, gonna wanna, right? Gonna wanna, gotta, gonna wanna, gotta, It's smaller. You guys have to forgive me. This is why I wanted to come here live to just test this out. Let's make it bigger. There we go. That's better. All right. So, yeah. So these are the contractions. These are the contractions that I wanted to share with you guys. Okay. Contractions that a lot of people may know of, but they're not sure about. Okay. Now, why do I call these contractions? Because like a standard contraction, you're putting two words together. You're putting two words together to make one word. Um, and this, what we see here is what happens most often when speak, people speak quickly. And, and this, this is a, uh, an important thing for you guys to understand if you want to sound more natural. Now, as an American, I can only speak based on the American accent. I do think British and Australians and Canadians speak like this, but I cannot guarantee that they are the same attractions. I'm pretty sure many of them are, right? Gonna, for example. I'm pretty sure you guys understand gonna is going to, right? So the normal way would be like, I'm going to go, or I'm going to buy, yeah, I'm going to see. Using this going to uh, future form, I have a video on what you're going to and will. The future form, you're talking about an intention, something you're going to do. But when you speak quickly, you put it together. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy. So it's very easy. And it's very natural. Now, what I'm teaching you, what I'm showing you guys here, this is something you guys will not do in uh, formal situations. If you guys are in a business meeting, if you guys uh, are meeting, let's say, elderly people, people who you would normally be much more respect, more who deserve much more respect, you're not going to talk like this, okay? This is colloquial English, short forms that you that you use when you're talking to your friends, okay? And I think, being that this is my first live, this is a really good topic. A really good subject that I can share with you guys other than questions and answers that I will answer if people share in the chat until then I'm gonna continue with a lesson like this now gonna most people know wanna same thing I believe most people know this also means like want to right or I want a I want a bike I want a bike or I want to buy I want to buy you see so this one actually can either be want to or want a and it's like well, what's, what's the difference well, to, the preposition to, it's going to be going towards another verb, right? So you want to buy something. You want to go somewhere. I want to go. I want to buy. Now, if you have a, a noun after want, you're not going to use to because, you know, to is that preposition for a verb. So you're going to use the article, right? I do have a video on articles, on a and and the. It's really important for you to watch if you're not sure how to use them. But... To simplify it, every countable noun, when it's singular, must have an article. So you're going to say a, a bike, a car. So I want a car. I want a car. Uh, I, I, I want a, I want a, I want a bike. I use that example. Right? I want a book. See, I want a book. I want a book. So one, wanna is not just want to, but it's want a. So it. it depends on whether it's a verb or a noun following it. But, it. but when you use this collocation, when you use a short form, it doesn't matter. I want to. That's what's so nice about this. Gotta, I'm certain most everyone knows gotta, right? I gotta go. I, I gotta, I gotta see it. 
Oh man, I gotta check out Mr. Finn's first live. <laughs> See if he makes a fool of himself. It happened. <laughs> All right, so gotta. So this one here is the same thing. Got to or got a. So this one is very similar to one. Depending on what you're saying after the got, if it's a verb, it's got to, got to go, or got to buy. Gotta go, gotta buy. Or I got a, I got a fish, right? You're going fishing. I got a fish, I got a fish. See? So it's very important you understand. To goes with verbs, and a goes with the singular noun. Gimme, gimme, gimme. What does this mean? Give me a break. Uh, Give me, give me a bottle of water, All right? Give me, give me. But you say it so fast, you drop the V and you just kind of link it together. Give me. That was very easy. Now, here we go. I, I think we're going to start to get to some that many people aren't sure what they mean. Let me. Let me. You see, it's funny, right? English and Mr. Finn is like, Mr. Finn, what is this? Portuguese? Is this, is this Hebrew? Is this Greek? No, this is English, but in short forms. And I guarantee almost all of these, you guys will understand if you say them, if you verbally say them. Why do I say that? Be very careful. Learning English just by reading is difficult. And I say you should not do it for beginners. I like this method of reading to learn and improve English for upper, intermediate, intermediate to advanced, but beginners shouldn't. Why? Because when you read it, a lot of times it makes no sense. But if you speak it, if you say the words, you have to trust your ears, right? Let me, let me go, let me see. You guys kind of hearing what this means? Let me, let me, let me go, let me see. What about this one? Probably looks like Spanish for milk, huh? Leche. 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 What does it mean? Leche. Hey, you know, you're not supposed to do this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let you this time. I'm gonna let you go. I'll let you watch the show. I'll let you. I'll let you stay up late. What does it sound like? Letcha, letcha, let you. Right? I'm a this one is like these other one here. Gotta, wanna, ama. Ama go, ama see. Yeah, very good. Ama see, I'm gonna go. That's right. Very good, Lisa. That's the lecha. I'm a. I'm a go, I'm a see. So I think some of these here are gonna be a little easier too. Ada. What is this one? Ada. Ought to, or outa, sorry, I made a mistake. I was saying this one. I was saying outta here. Outta, outta. It's out of lettuce, out of milk. My wife say, honey, can you go to the store? We're outta, out of milk. We're outta, outta, no. Lisa, that's, that's the first one here. You look at the first one on top, gonna, I'm gonna. Or you could kind of say this one. I'm gonna is gonna be here. If you say I'm gonna, that's gonna be, you know, the normal contraction, right, of I am going to. I'm gonna. Or you could just say this one. I'ma go. Like this one, Lisa, this one is like saying I'm going without saying the gun. I'ma go, I'ma see, I'ma buy. Uh, growing up in LA, a lot of people use this I'm a, I'm a. Yeah. That one, Camilla, is this last one here. Out of, out of time. I'm out of, I'm out of time. I'm out of patience. <laughs> I'm out of milk. My wife says, hey, go get some milk. We are, we're out of milk. All right, so those ones, these ones here, like I said, when I was putting those lists together, I was really trying to think of the most common contractions, short forms, that people use in natural everyday English that typically is not taught in schools. And if you want to sound natural, this is how you do it. Everybody should know this one. 
seriously, like everybody who, who speaks English and uses English and, and chats, right? You know, use WhatsApp, use you know Facebook chat or whatever. Kinda. What is this one? Huh? Lisa's still here, Camilla. What is this one? Kinda. This one's super easy. Like, you know, I'm kind of busy. I only work all day long. <laughs> Funny is, is I'm not tired at all, uh, but I'm kind of busy giving classes, making classes, creating content, helping my wife raise two children, give her time. I'm kind of busy. This one is similar to this one, right? What was this one? Camilla showed it. Out of, out of, out of. Very good, Camilla. Kind of is kind of. That's right. So. Kind of tired, which I'm not. Kind of busy, that's an understatement. <laughs> I'm actually very busy. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. So a very common, very, very often used short form, or you can even call it a contraction to say kind of. Now, let's get to some that are a little more trickier, like this one. No, 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 no. Now, if I say it, I'm pretty certain you guys are understanding. What do you What do you want to eat? No, that's not a good example. Like, um, uh, who, who, who? What's your favorite? What's your favorite movie ever? Ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That one should be easy, right? Let's see if someone throws it in the chat. I don't know. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do this weekend? I don't know. Probably work. Maybe have another barbecue. Now that I have a nice house in the backyard, I like to have my barbecues, play with the kids. I don't know. I'll put it in the chat. It means I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Facebook or something. I don't know, okay? So like I said before, it's really important when you're trying to learn these contractions, these short forms, to trust your ears. Don't trust your brain. Don't try to understand them, reading them silently into your head. These things are things, these are examples of the importance of trusting your ears when it comes to the language, okay? Because now we're starting to get the words that look like a whole nother language. What about this one? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know what that means, but thanks, I guess. <laughs> what is that, huh? What is what is number eleven? Can anybody tell me what number eleven is? Do ya? Do ya? Now think about question tags. I have uh, I have in my notebook. My notebook over there. I have on, in my notebook some notes to make a video on question tag. Right. That's it, Camilla. Very good. This one here. This one here is going to be used for question tags, uh, but not necessarily this one, Camilla. That's this one here. Did you? Right. Did you? Did you go? Did you see it? Did you? Did you buy it? Did you get a good grade? Did you pass? Did you get a promotion? So that one, Camilla, is here. This one is similar. So as I was saying, think about question tags, right? So what are question tags? Question tags is when you, you say a sentence and then you attach a question at the end, typically for uh, confirmation. You want someone to confirm what you're saying. There you go, Camilla, that's right. Do ya? So, uh, you like this, do you? Or you know what I'm talking about, do you? Do you wanna go, do you? That's right. So this one is do you, this one will be in the present, and this one will be in the past, did you? Did you go, did you buy? Do you know? Do you, do you know? Do you know Portuguese, do you know English? Do you know Japanese, right? So good, very good, okay? Spiritual minds, rock on, bro, I don't know. What you mean by that, but thanks for sharing. Now, none of the none of the collocations I have here has anything 
in the, that is spiritual mind. But what about this one? What about this one? This one is a little trickier. This one would be an answer to a question. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. And you can answer it with this if your answer is negative. Okay, here's the question. Have you seen my tongue twister today? Right? Today's Tuesday. And every Tuesday, I release a tongue twister. So, did you see my tongue twister today? Or have you seen my tongue twister today? And how could you answer if it's negative? If you haven't seen it, what would this be? Come on, guys. That's it, Camilla. Very good. That's it. Not yet. Not yet. Now, you're going to say, Mr. Finn, what is this not yet? Not yet. Okay, look, it makes zero sense if you sound it out slowly. But the idea with this collocation is you're putting it together to make a word. So have you seen my have you seen my tongue twister today? Not yet, Mr. Finn. Not yet. Not yet. You see how that works? Very good. Excellent. All right. So I had kind of already alluded to this one when I was explaining this one, right? My brain was was uh, not cooperating with me. But this one is outa, and this one's ada. And what is ada? Ada is a collocation. No, I'm sorry. It's a it's a con it's a contraction or a short form of a contraction that kind of means the same as this, shoulda. So if you know shoulda, you should have no problem with oughta. What is it, what is, what is this here? What is shoulda? Huh? I put these three together because in English we say, if someone says, oh man, I should have done that. I say, yeah, you shoulda, woulda, coulda, but you didn't. Oh man, I could have done it, yeah? Well, you coulda, woulda, shoulda, but you didn't. Uh, these three here, these three here are used, um, I guess you could say in the conditionals, right? I would have, I would have gone, I would, I would have seen, I should have gone, I should have seen. These here are should have, would have, and could have. Should have, would have, and could have. Okay, should have, and those of you who know the... Uh, Contractions or the, the conditionals should know what these mean. Should have, would have, and could have. This has to do with conditionals. I should have gone. That's talking about some advice. I should have done this. I should have bought that. I would have, right? Would have means if I had known, I would have gone. Because I have the ability to. I would have bought that. I had the money. Right? You could have, could have is used for possibility, right? Should have gone, would have gone, and could have gone. This PP I put there, I kind of should have spaced that out more. That PP is the past participle, right? When you use this contraction, the it's a very simple contraction. You have the should have, oh, I spelled should wrong. <laughs> That's okay, I was doing it fast. But when you do that, when you when you use this contraction, this construction, you're talking about you're talking about uh, a hypothetical thing, a hypothetical present or hypothetical future dealing with a hypothetical present, right? This is this is talking in the second conditional, and I think one day maybe I'll just do a, a live on this or I might record a video on that. But second conditional, those of you who aren't familiar with conditionals, we have four conditionals: zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional, third conditional, right? So second and third conditional. We'll use this construction. Should have past participle, would have past participle, and could have past participle. It might have, it must have, and that's where we're getting into these other ones. Uh, musta, musta, that's must have, right? So when you're using the second conditional, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, you're dealing with the hypothetical present. If I had, so if pre or if past, because it's the present is conditioned on the past. So if I had the time. I would have gone, I would have bought, right? So that's where you get this contraction, this, these short forms. Because when people are speaking quickly, and this is the problem I believe most English learners have when it comes to understanding English, because people speak so quickly that the words blend together. 
And that's why I figured this would be an appropriate first live, appropriate first video for you guys to see. And that way, when you guys do come across this in the future or speak, you'll be familiar with it. So shoulda is should have, woulda, would have, coulda, could have. So explaining these three, what is oughta? Oughta go, oughta see, you oughta do this. You oughta, you oughta watch more of my content. You oughta practice those tongue twisters. They're supposed to be really fun. Uh, so oughta means ought to, okay? And not a lot of people are familiar with ought to. Basically, ought to is the same as should. Um, I did create a video on model verbs. And in that video on model verbs, I do talk about these model phrases. What are model phrases? They're just like model verbs, except they have the to. Like have to is the same as must. Um, ought to is the same as should. Let's see, I don't But anyways, so that one, that I explained in that video with the model verb, right? So ought to is the same as should. So when you look at this oughta, that's ought to. Cool, right? All right, let me put that away. Now, explain these ones. Now we get into these other ones that kind of look more like gibberish. You guys know what the word gibberish means. Gibberish means uh, nonsense. Gibberish, gibberish means um, nothing. It, it's people are making sounds and it, it's incoherent. Have to. I have to do this. I have to. I have to buy. Let me ask you guys a question. I have two people on. I know Camilla's one of them. I don't know who the second person is. How is my audio? Can you guys give me a thumbs up or can you me, let me know if the audio is good? Um, I have a lapel microphone which I bought to make my videos better when I record out in nature because they're in. But I'm not sure about the quality here. I uh, hopefully soon, hopefully by next week, I'll have a new microphone. But I don't know how it sounds. Please let me know in the chat how it sounds, okay? Now, I have to. I have to do my best. I have to be as simple as possible. When I when I give my classes, I think of the acronym uh, PISS, right? PISS. What is this? If you don't know what acronyms are, acronyms are when you take the first word, of every letter in a phrase that you're using, and that's an acronym. So like FBI is a very popular acronym, or a school that I used to work at, CCAA, that's an acronym. Uh, so when I teach, as a teacher, I have this acronym in my head, K-I-S-S, -S, KISS. Uh, Camilla, you were one of my students way in the past. I don't know if you remember what this acronym stands for, but this for me represents keep it sweet and simple. Keep it sweet and simple. So when I'm trying to explain things, I have to, I have to keep it sweet and simple. So that's me throwing out this example for have to, have to go, have to go. I have to, I have to be as energetic as possible. I have to have fun, right? I love what I do. I have to have fun. If I don't have fun, then I don't want to do it. So I use the acronym KISS when I'm creating my lessons, when I'm creating my videos. I don't want to go too deep. I can go deep, but not everybody likes it. How about this one? Watch out. What you doing? Mm -hmm. What you eating? What you, what you got in your hands? What you? What you got? What you doing? What are you doing? No, not have to. Have to is the have to. Yeah, have to is the have to. Good job, Camilla. Musta is the must have. Should have got. Maybe I should have put this up here with this one. Yeah, that's better. That's could have musta, right? So so musta is must have. Uh, what is that one, Camilla? What? What? Because I'm talking about whatcha. What you doing? What you saying? I don't know what you saying. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're talking about. See? Yeah, that's it. What are you? That's it. What are you doing? What are you talking about? I don't see. I don't I don't understand. What 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 you got there in your hands? 
Now that one's different. What you got in your hands? What do you have in your hands? But you see, it works the same way. What's interesting, uh, in the South, right, in America, uh, people in the South talk a lot like this. Watch movies that have to do with that. What you got in your hands? What you talking about, boy? <laughs> It's really funny. Yeah, it's really funny, right? Okay, good. And that's why I kind of figured this would be a really good subject to have my first slide, just because just because I figure my, my goal here is to make the language easier and to kind of get people to be better communicators. Now, I use this one all the time. I use this one all the time, right? Um, my wife is explaining something to me, or... You know, let's say I don't really work any place anymore except privately. Uh, so I don't have a boss. I'm my own boss. It's really nice. But anyways, my wife will try to explain something to me. And I'll be like, okay, gotcha. Gotcha. What does this mean? Or, or my son is trying to run away with something that he's not supposed to have in his hands. And I go after him and I, gotcha. I gotcha. What does that mean? Gotcha. Um, this co this uh, contraction here reminds me of an old movie in the eighties. Gotcha, gotcha, and a song too. Gotcha, gotcha. Where I want you too late to turn back now. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it's funny talking about references in the eighties. I'm really aging myself here. Oh my gosh, I don't know how many times giving classes with like teenagers. Now use an example that I that I figured everybody knew. And I would have the students with a blank look on their face and be like, huh? What? And that's why I'd be like, oh man. That's when I felt old. Because <laughs> I don't feel old, man. I got energy. Uh, I feel like a spry young guy. But uh, that's when I would feel old. Yeah, Camilla. She's in the house. Very good. Got you. I got you. So, this, even if you use it the normal way, this can be used for two different situations, right? So the example with my wife, right? She's explaining something and I say, okay, I got you. I got you. What does that mean? Huh? It means I understand. I understand. I got you. Or like the example with my son, he's running away with something that he's not supposed to have. Mm, I got you, right? Or you catch someone. I got you. All right, but then you gonna say I caught you. I didn't put that one there. I should add that to my list right now. I caught you. Put that here too. Ah, caught you. There you go. Gotcha. See, thank you, Camilla. Having these lessons helped me expand my list here. All right. Okay, so caught you is similar to gotcha. Right? But but gotcha has, depending on the context, can have different meanings. But gotcha means I caught you. I caught you stealing the money. I caught you sneaking, I don't know, the food. I caught you taking cookies out of the cookie, cookie jar. All right. Now, this one. This one is so common in America, but the Americans use this as a dessert. Like one of the Americans' most favorite desserts is called s'mores. S'mores. What are s'mores? Let me see if I can show you what s'mores are. S'mores. Let me get a s'mores. And if you understand, if you understand what like the desserts are, it might be easy for you to understand why they're called s'mores right let me see let me stop sharing this screen and let me share this screen here share screen i got you share this one here share all right so right here so this guys this is the most popular the most common dessert that americans eat when they go camping now I live in Brazil, and the concept of camping is alien to many Brazilians. I can't say for all. I know a lot of Brazilians in the south of the country who go camping. But where I live in the northeast, it's not very common. 
Whereas in America, super common. And every time you go camping in America, this is like tradition. Let me show this picture here. This is nasty. So what are s'mores? Well, you take two graham crackers. Graham crackers are like, you know, basically things, a little like a, 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 a kind of a sweet kind of honey cracker. You put a piece of chocolate on it, and then you take a marshmallow and you roast a marshmallow. You roast a marshmallow over fire. Roast a marshmallow, right? So you put a marshmallow on a stick, roast the marshmallow, when the marshmallow, like some people like it burnt, like they put it in the fire and it cat, literally catches on fire like this one, and it really lights it. I mean, it burns quick. I'm not a fan of the burnt marshmallows. I like mine like this one here. Nice golden brown. Yeah, see? And when it's hot like this, you set it down on top of the chocolate that's in the graham cracker, you put another graham cracker on top, then you have s'more. That's a s'more. So, tell me, what is it? Why, why did I put on this list here of s'mores? What, what, are, what are s'mores? Let me share my list again. Let me share my list again here. Screen. I can't share that. Okay, here we go. Right here. Now, I have it here. S'more. What is this? What is it? What does the mean? What does it mean? S'more. Hmm? What does that mean? Like I said, this that's it, Camilla. That's my. That's great job. That's right. You see, and, and you know, you know what's very interesting. Americans will say this instinctively, but they do not understand why the dessert is called s'mores. So, why are they called s'mores? Because they're so good, they're so good, you want some more. And speaking from experience, <laughs> oh yeah, really good. You do want some more, but you can't have a tendency to eat too much and have a belly ache. So yeah. But yes, good. Now, here we go, let's, let's finish up our list here, right? What a, what a, what does this mean? What a, what a, what a, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, what do you want? What a, what do you want? Uh, are you hungry? What do you want? What do you, what do you, how about this one? Right, so uh, Camilla, I asked about the uh, s'mores, and she gave me the answer some more. And I could say, "Hey, how'd you know? How'd you know? Does that make sense? How'd you? How'd you know? All right. Now, last two. What's this one?" Did you get it? Did you get it? <laughs> you see, if you read it, it looks like, you're gonna say, Mr. Finn, that's not English. What is that? Remember what I had said. These are the things that you have to pronounce out loud. These are the things that you have to say. Yes, Camilla, very good. That's this one here. Almost. Yeah, but how'd you? Yeah, how did you know? How did you see? That's it, Camilla. Did you get it? But remember here, this one here, you're not gonna have the auxiliary in the front. You know, you as an amazing student, as you were of mine and now an exceptional teacher, the way you say it here is the correct way. Did you get it? All right, now, there's nothing wrong with that question except for not capitalizing the D. <laughs> That's okay. But you gotta understand something. Many times, natives won't even use the proper English. Natives themselves, you can see this Within, with music, you can see this in series and movies. They don't speak necessarily correct. So many times they're gonna make questions that aren't grammatically correct. They're gonna make questions lacking the auxiliary, lacking the proper form. Actually, they'll make a question with just one word. Really? <laughs> really, you see? And this comes down to the question of intonation. And this is another aspect of the English language that is really important for people to get. 
rhythm and stress, you know, the rhythm of the words, the rhythm of the sentence, and the stress, stressing the right words at the right time. Okay? So this one here has to do with intonation. Questions, typically, if you want an answer or if you're surprised, they go up. Really? <laughs> really? Wow. Ah, it's amazing, right? So this one is exactly what we see on the screen here. Did you get it except without the did? Did you get it? Did you get it? Actually, you know what? Now that I'm pronouncing it, I think it is there, Camilla. I think the you get it. You, yeah, okay. So let me let me take that back. It's funny. See, you got to trust your ears. You got to trust your ears. That ju, 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 that is the did you. Ju, did you. See, it's, a, it's like the last part of the of the did. The D, it's like if you put the D with the U. Did you get it? Did you get it? <laughs> Excellent. Great job. Love it. Now, last one. Last one here. Y'all. This is something Mr. Finn says frequently, and it's a very common phrase for people in the South. Cowboys, rednecks, you know, they'll say, hey, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? Y'all okay? Y'all tired? Y'all having fun? Are y'all enjoying this live stream? <laughs> y'all? Anybody know it? Anybody got it? How y'all doing? I got one person active in the live. Very thankful for that. That's it. She didn't let me down. You all, this is super, super, super common. Very common. Pay attention to country singers. Pay attention to people in the South. I like Southern speech. Like, uh, I'm not very good at accents. Um, I oftentimes will play some of them. I do like, as an English teacher, I use British material to give classes. So I want to give my students the most exposure to the language as possible. And a lot of my students travel around the world, uh, but they laugh at me like, I try to do a British accent. I don't do it very well. For some reason, it eludes me. I can't do it. Even American accents, are, they're all really difficult. Northern accents, Canadian accents, uh, Eastern accents. But the Southern accent, the Southern one I can do. Like, how y'all doing? I'm here having a good time with y'all. The reason why I like the Southern accent, it's because it kind of sounds like they're singing, you know? They kind of talk like this. For me, it's kind of easy to do, you know? So this is why I wanted to bring y'all this lesson today, because knowing these words, y'all, knowing these words, or I should say the contraction of these words, can help y'all become better speakers. Don't speak like this. <laughs> I want you guys to be... Uh, good speakers, uh, good communicators, right? And the reason why I wanted to bring this first live was to test it out. I wanted to see how the live works. I've never done this before. I've been a guest. I've done many lives. I've done Instagram lives. I've been guests on many people or with many people on Instagram. And recently I have been participating in some live panels on uh, YouTube with different channels that I, that I watch and I like. And they invited me on, which has been wonderful. But this is my first live, so I wanted to I wanted to test how it works. I wanted to see how it goes, and um, I wanted to see the kind of interaction I got. So you know, Camille, I can't thank you enough for being here with me. I was really thankful, and I I had to have a backup. You know, um, I think a good teacher is a teacher who's prepared, and uh, I'm really good at improv. I'm really good at uh, explaining things or carrying on either a conversation or a lesson with very little to no preparation, but it's really important to have some things on hand. So I, I, I was, I, I was, I had a feeling that the out, the, the, the turnout that I was going to have, you know, was going to be like this. I didn't think it was going to be a lot of people, you know, it's Tuesday night. And um, I did try to brought, I did try to advertise this on Instagram and stuff a little bit, but I did it today. So, uh, I wasn't expecting a huge turnout. Um, hopefully people can watch this later. I will save this and uh, leave a comment below. Please leave, me, leave a comment about this, the quality of the audio because I'm using this microphone. 
um, leave me a comment about things you would like to see. I would also like to know what days you think this would be better to do, or if I should do it more often in the week, which I would like to do. I would like to get together with you guys more often in the week, and I would like to have them more, I could say, uncut, even in this, or more, you know, un, un, uh, un, I don't say unprepared, but off the shoot, right? How's it going? Joshua, uh, I don't know which Joshua you are. I have a cousin Joshua, a couple cousins Joshua, some friends, but thank you for showing up. Um, I'm actually going to be wrapping this up soon. Been here for 50 minutes. But anyways, I, like I said, I wanted to be here. I wanted to be here. I wanted to, I wanted to test out the live stream. I wanted to see how it works. I wanted to figure out how to, to I wanted to get familiar with the program and see if I can, I'm kind of glad I did because it wasn't sharing the file that I wanted to share. So luckily I figured out how to share the screen. I'm glad that I prepared what I did prepare because I figured for a first live stream, I wanted to do something that could be productive, and something that is worthy for, you know, worthy to share. Like I can keep it on. And even though it's a long video, I think there's a lot of value in this kind of lesson because how many, how many were there? Let me see on my list. 27. Tw I was able <laughs> Proud of myself there. <laughs> I was able to put together 27, 27 different uh, short forms, right? 27 different contractions that everyday English speakers use, but not even they are familiar with. Like, I mean, they're familiar with it, but they don't know of it. Yeah, it is my cousin. How you doing, man? Thank you for showing up. Uh, I appreciate it. I would like, and you could leave, please leave a comment too, maybe afterward when the, when the video is archived. Leave a comment too, because I'd like to know what days of the week are best to do this. Um, I'm thinking Tuesdays, I'm thinking Thursdays, and I'm thinking maybe Saturday mornings. I'm thinking of maybe doing it two or three times a week, but I don't know. I want to do it more often. I've done, because I want to have more engagement with you guys. I want to have real, actual hands-on engagement, not just recording videos and editing videos. I like to do it, but it's a lot of work. You guys have no idea how much work it takes to prepare those videos. The tongue twisters I do every week and the other videos, it's a lot of work. I gotta prepare notes, I gotta record it, I gotta edit it, and I do it all myself. And I gotta do that on top of the classes that I give. And, I, and those of you who are teachers, you understand how much work it takes to prepare classes. I got two kids, you know, so it's a lot of stuff. So. Now that I finally have an office, now that I finally have a place where I, I'm more comfortable, I have my own little my own little man cave, you can say, I am much more available to do this. And this is something I would like to do more of. Um, you guys can leave in the chat or in the comments after this is archived, topics you'd like me to, to address, uh, challenges or difficulties you guys have. Maybe we could do one on homophones, which I was thinking about doing too. Um, but, or something that like I had planned today, question and answers, you know, maybe some days I'll just come on, talk to you guys and it might be something I can do later on when I have more, more people in the chat, more people watching, right? I only got two people right now, which is okay. It's cool. I'm really thankful for you guys to be here, but I think a question and answer would be better when there's a lot more people here because I, uh, I just want to help. That's my aim. That's my goal, right? So anyways, uh, I'm going to wrap this up, all right? Wrap this up. I want to thank you guys for, for joining me here. This was a blast. I had a blast. Uh, and I want to, like I said, I want to do this a lot more, right? So if everything works out correctly, and I'm going to wait to hear from feedback from you guys because that feedback you guys give me will help me have a better, have a, help me have a better understanding and help me plan better on how I should do this. But I promise you guys, this here is something that I want to do a lot more of, okay? Um, like I said, I wanna do things that are more organic, more real, more raw, all right? So that's it guys, I had a great time. I'm very thankful that you guys are here. Once again, leave a comment, share this with people those of your students, you can use some of these things. Take notes of your teachers and you can help them show your students this in the class. But share it. If you haven't subscribed, 
I would appreciate it. Subscribe, send me a like, whatever. Engage. That's all I want. I just want engagement. I want to do my best to make you better. I'm here to do that. My focus is to help you be the better communicate, the best communicator that you can be. All right, guys. So without further ado, I'll see you next time. I'm Mr. Finn, and I'll catch you later. Bam!